And as we pick up the action, we're at the 15 minute mark of the first quarter. Glenelg, one straight goal to Sturt, one goal two. Stephen Barrett now, well shepherded by Henwood. In front, McDermott, good effort. Stephen Kernahan now with his first kick, first chance. Coughing. You could see he was going to mark that one. And what a superb kick around the corner by Stephen Kernahan. He really meant that, Stephen Kernahan. He saw Coughing. And the man from Lucendale took a fine mark. He's not from Lucendale anymore. I think the family sold that property. Coughing 20 metres out. Problems with that one. Copping's first goal. Glenelg two goals. The Blues one two. Well, so Glenelg may have been a little bit shaky early, but that take then by Alan Stringer as he moved into the centre wing, almost up to half back area, got the ball out and he got Glenelg running. And they certainly ran it up the wing much more confidently, even though Andrew Downs tried to put a tackle on and stop the ball at centre wing. He was unable to do so, and Glenelg forced it further forward still. And it was Stephen Kernahan finally who put his hands onto the ball and then spun onto his left foot instead of blindly shooting at the goal he's controlled the leg beautifully back to um, Copping and Copping in front of goal is Mark and scored Glenelg's second goal Spiel against Carey Carey starting on the interchange bench last week this week opened the game with big Steve Thompson on the bench waiting his opportunity to play his first league game aerial ping pong downs in kidney there Walsh Martin, finally it's kicked into attack by Marshall, up towards the half forward line, Kernahan's there tapped away from that player, but he's going to be first there, but Tom was the player that was taken care of, on the left leg, he's put it up again, McDermott at the back can't get his uh, hands to it to bring it down, got his hands on it but couldn't bring it down and it's out of play in the full forward left puck, two goals to one, two, ten minutes gone Kernahan will go for the ruck in the forward pocket I would think, and try to hook it back to McGuinness going down in defence looks like Klump's going for it wouldn't have thought he could uh, go with Kernahan a bit taller than uh, Klump high chat on Mervyn Kane and the Sturt coach gets a free kick in the back pocket bit lucky Mervyn Kane there he ducked the head got the benefit of the free kick and he goes out wide pretty well dispersed out there to Whittlesey if he's got the pace but Kidney takes it takes front spot from him Kidney did it very well gee Marshall's clear the kidney kick though he was pushed off balance on the kick and it's gone out trying to pick up the uh, the centre player for Sturt Marshall certainly there for Glenelg over the top now Downs Zubrinik tackles Simons but not quickly enough we see McDermott go in Kernahan off hands not on the rebound Copping short chip away Copping's got two great driving by Copping Glenelg, three goals without a miss. Sturt, one, two. That was a very good kick in by Glenelg then. Robert Colt caught underneath the ball. Kernahan looked as though he was going to mark it and Matthews came across to spoil it away from him. The Sturt players went to ground and Matthews, of course, leaving his man copping to come across the front of the pack and he did it very well. Sharked the ball beautifully and scored. So Glenelg, three goals to one, two. I think you'll probably find that Peter Motley's playing centre. Peter, it's either got to be him or Viney, but uh, I think you'll find it's Motley. Spiel against Carey. Carey's back, not that's a beauty. Straight to Marshall. Marshall puts it out in front of Kernahan. Big fellow gets there, paddling it now, wants support. No pressure put on him, slips out of pass. Well, that's not a good one. And it goes to Andrew Downs quickly now to Whittlesey. Whittlesey gets blocked. McDermott, no, that is Gavin Wall shoots for goal. And it's a point only to the base. Gee, it's not one of the best kicks I've ever seen Stephen Kernahan put out. Nevertheless, a point to Glenelg. 3-1 to 1-2. Glenelg look very dangerous when they go forward. They've got free moving players up there smashing away Marshall. Gumley in there fighting hard for the Blues. Works it out now, Peter Motley. Got plenty of time. Sets it up. Stephen Barrett read it pretty well in front of Painter. Painter looked short of a run. Wilmot back to Painter. He didn't handle it well at all. Stephen Barrett now to David Kernahan. Well, if he's playing on grandstand side, he's certainly covering a lot of ground. Kidney. You've got to fight hard for your kicks in this game, and uh, Sturt players mean business. They uh, won their first game last week, and they want to make it two out of four instead of one out of three. Kidney with 15 metres now to centre-half forward. 
gets distance with the kick. Stephen Kernahan clock. Kernahan got back uh, the rear position on that occasion. The handball came out. Robert Clock. Reed. Martin. Martin's on grandstand side. Elects to go short. Looking for Motley, but didn't find him. The ball has just run out. Center wing grandstand side. We're 13 minutes in. Glenelg 3 1, Sturt 1 2. Throw in at the interchange gate. Carey and Spiel. Bit of experience there. The bodies go in. Spiel. Carey might have got the tap either side, but as McDermott sent them in, Kernahan comes to meet it. Can't get his fingers. There is Klopp. He's pushed off it. Well taken off him by Stringer. But the umpire said a push in the back, and that'll go to Robert Klomp on the half-back flank. Klomp centres the ball. Painter. Simons there. Gets it out nicely to McDermott. Playing well in the first quarter. David Kernahan thought about playing on. Now he pushes out the pass and finds on the outer side Stephen Barrett. It'd be too far out to score into this breeze. Got a few to shoot at. Kernahan gives the lead out towards that player. He'll get there. Fine pass. Put it right out in front of him where he can make his own pace to the ball. And Kernahan has got it 30 metres out on a 45 degree angle. Not that easy a kick. He's kicking into this uh, breeze. And it's uh, brisk. Coming in from perhaps the northwest. Kernahan. Towards the lake end. Well, oh, that's uh, spot on. Top kick kept it low. His first. The base 4 1, Sturt 1 2. Well, the Nilk's starting to show a little bit of confidence now. Their play from body to body is much better. Their take of the ball is much better than it was in the first five minutes. And that lead then by Stephen Kernahan was excellent. He went slowly with Robert Klomp, just made out the lead. And then just as the ball came to foot, he accelerated quickly and opened up the space for himself. It was very well done. Well, they're killing Sturt at the moment, and uh, Sturt uh, defend, defending players are being run ragged. Motley, Gumley, Hall in front. Plenty of opposition there. Hall got one in the back of the neck, and he'll take the free kick on that occasion uh, against Matt Benson. Now McDermott playing very well. Marshall behind Motley in front. Motley too, too strong in front then. Had too much height for Marshall and took a good mark. Motley playing in the centre. The handball goes out to Smith. Smith will try to centre it to centre half forward. Barrett punches away. McGuinness read it beautifully. Onto that left foot. Classic kicking action. Henwood and Downs. Downs belts away. Alan Stringer had it for a moment and then lost it. Andrew Downs uses the left boot. No one home for the Blues. Seabone easily. Gets it out to Ross Gibbs. Carey directing traffic out towards Simons. Simons will go long to Gavin Walsh. Simons has had five kicks. Gavin Walsh at half forward, takes the mark. Did Kernahan's on his own. Downs is trying to cover him now. Where's Klopp? Take your pick, G. Henwood's got that. Sturt defence, absolutely ragged at the moment. They haven't got a clue what's going on. Henwood from centre half forward, puts a high ball in. Kernahan in front, copying behind! Well, how do you do that? Turn hands in front. Topping would be four inches shorter, but with those long arms. And superb judgment then, Copping, to the fine mark. Young Paul Matthews is having his hands full, Peter, in his first game. Oh, well, sure is, Ed. Stephen Copping, well, he's kicked two. That's three. Three in the first quarter, Copping. 5-1, Glenelg. Sturt, 1-2. with a 30-point lead as we start the second quarter here at Football Park. Sturt really in trouble. And they'll to kick with the breeze in this quarter. 7-3 plays 2-3. Carey against Spiel. Spiel's tap down, taken by Marshall around the corner. Walsh rather luckily, but he hooks it in towards full forward. Copping in there. Thumped away, however, by Downs in turn. Whittlesey going to have to get it now and work hard for his fry. With him is McGuinness. He's got the pace and the strength. Oh, he's upended, however, by Mervyn Kane, who did it well. And an elbow fry to kick the ball out of defence. But the kick is a shocker. Has gone off the side of his boot and out of play on the full. Under no pressure, really. And it's David Kernahan to get the penalty free kick. Kernahan centres it. 
looking for his brother, going to be short of that player, Eddie Fry, joined, however, by Reed in turn Kane. Kane towards centre field, not a good kick, McDermott. He'll want backup support. He gets it there now from Stringer. Carey, likewise, Stephen Barrett, the Bays into attack again. Not a good kick off the side. Copping almost, but the ball just rolls off the end of his fingers and it's out of play in the right forward pocket. Gee, Stephen Barrett could have given that one to Simons and uh, if he did, it certainly would have been a goal. Reads at full back on Kernahan. Clomps out at centre half back on Henwood. Kernahan got that tapped out. Kidney only had his head pulled off. He'll take a free kick in the right forward pocket. Herbert Kane obviously realised that Klopp was in trouble against Kernahan in the air, on the ground and generally. So Peter Reid's got the job. Perhaps uh, young Paul Matthews may have been given the job on Kernahan, but that wasn't to be. He's been banished to the, to the booth. Kidney's kick is offline. Minor score only. Glenelg 7-4, Sturt 2-3. Yes, not a hard kick by that right forward pocket standard. Breeze coming in the right direction from left to right. Andrew Downs. Grandstand side. The lead from Whittlesey. Well passed. Whittlesey centres the ball. Spill's going to have to work hard for this one. Didn't choose to. Leaving the ball behind Hedwood. Well done. Matthew Benson got it out there to Todd Viney up towards the half forward line. Almost Gumley. Gumley in the forward pocket. Gibbs there with him. Works back onto the ball, but running against the tide, but gets out of it well. Has a bounce as he's well shepherded. Kicks towards centre wing and Carey. Carey in front of Spool. Benson in there. Derrington. Here's a chance now. Viney gave it to Painter. Painter in turn. Benson couldn't quite get there. Out came Duthie. Painter gave it, got it from Benson. The Shepherd is on a charge. Gumley within there is Gibbs. Gets it out now. A charge for Martin. Into the open goal. Hook back. Great goal. His first. Sturt had to work extremely hard for that, but got number three on the board. 3-3. Three, three, they trail Glenelg 7-4. Well, it was wingman Jeff Martin to score the goal for Sturt. Up into the forward line. Gumley working hard there. He's been caught holding the ball for lying over it in the first quarter on two occasions. But on this one, he managed to just push it out, and Martin did it very well indeed, too. He didn't panic. He saw the opening of the goal, could have run straight at it, but when the player came at him, ran to give himself a full face. Well, that was the opening to the second quarter that the Blues needed. Down in the first quarter, but coming back. Spiel doing well. Derrington thieved the ball from the centre area. Gumley again caught under the ball. Ross Gibbs trapped it. Gumley's there as well, though. Players all over it, and the umpire will bounce it. Big Rick Davies lumbers out to the bounce, but uh, Frank Spiel will come in and do it for him. Tries to get it down, and Derrington goes through. Still playing the ball in front of him. Onto the left foot now. Winds it up. I think he's kicked it. Great goal. Individual effort there by Derrington. His first. Sturt kicked back now. 4-3 to go to 7-4. Well, I suppose that's what you'd call a captain's goal, and Jim Derrington very anxious to lift the side, no doubt. Getting that ball in the middle of the pack and then running through and a great control on the left foot to score the goal. Peter Motley's back into the half-back line. He's playing loose in defence at the moment, so Glenelg have got an extra player in defence. Painter playing centre, and the Blues starting to get the ball out of the big centre square. Spill against Carey. Good bounce. Spill got up very high. McGuinness couldn't. Motley can. Wobbles one to the half forward line. Coming to meet it there was Benson, but it's taken off him by Simon. Towards centre wing. A chance for Glenelg now. McGuinness. Marshall. Half forward line. The base. Set it up again. Out comes Kernan. Beautifully passed. Right on the chest. Marshall going back. Wants the short pass back in again. But he's going for the lead of Copping. Copping gets swallowed by Klomp. And I think he's going to get a free kick. He's given a free kick to Klomp. Well, it couldn't have been against Klomp because Klomp was in front. It had to be by the other defending Sturt player and the one who's playing indeed on Copping, and that would be Andrew Downs. But Copping was most certainly the meat in the sandwich. He booted four at a great start to the first quarter. He's got it 30 metres out in front. Breeze at his back. He sort of misses these. Hooks it slightly, but he still nudges it through. Their feelings. That was a great movement down the wing then. 
David Marshall, when he receives, he's wonderful at running into that between half forward and centre of that half forward to receive the attacking pass. And Galil did it beautifully from half back. And Marshall's kick to Kernahan was a great kick. And Kernahan in turn passing him towards the centre of the ground. A very nice pass indeed, putting Sturdon into the hot seat and an infringement allowing Copping the goal. Six minutes into the second quarter, the Bays lead by 25 points. Peter Carey and Frank Spiel. Frank's getting caught under a bit. He's having to pull back into defence towards Painter. Mervyn Kane down a bit on pace. Got the ball now. We'll have to, he's running the wrong way. He's in trouble. Over the top to Fry. Fry plays for the free kick, but it's not there. Tackle without the ball. Still didn't get the free kick. McGinnis off hands with the right boot. A point only. Plenty of booze coming from the Sturt section of the grandstand at the moment. 8-4 Glenelg. Sorry, should I say 8-5? No, 8-4. 8-5, in fact. Third time lucky. Sturt, 4-3. Kick in by Reed. Spiel. Over the top of Simons. Too tall. Did it well. Smith. Painter or Zubrick. Zubrick it was. Clomps under the hammer up high. Benson. Carey there. Dumps it 30 metres clear. But they got out of it. McGinnis too casual. Probably didn't know he was clear. Obviously didn't know. Derrington to Painter. Painter's long kick to the half forward line. Gumley there. Tap clear, however, by Wilmot. Seaboom takes it off the fingers and kicks it to the open space. Gee, someone's going to have to move some metres to get there. David Kernahan from the wing will get there first. Seaboom will want it. Wilmot a chance now. Short to the lead of Gumley. Too far for that player. The chance for Gibbs to clear. Getting back in defence, Stephen Barrett, and he will find Carey half-back flat. Beautiful pass from Stephen Barrett. Carey into the centre of the McDermott. Lenelg have got loose players all over the place at the moment. Gavin Walsh is one of them, but McDermott won't be able to get it to him. Eight kicks McDermott. Gavin Walsh now. Kernahan from behind. Derrington's handball is a sizzler. Spill from Painter. Painter runs through, couldn't pick the ball up. The umpire has indicated a free kick to Zubernick. Zubernick gave McDermott a whack in the face. I don't yeah, know that Painter's all that well, all that fit, you know. He looks exhausted almost after that effort. Plop. Motley caught Zubernick. A quick kick away. Duthie in front of Davies. Now Gumley. Viney. I don't think he needed that on that occasion. Rick Davies, the umpire will have to bounce. There's a few players look a bit tired out there. I agree with the comment on Painter in. Seems to be a bit short of a run, and uh, I think Robert Comp's in the same category. Although he's had to do a lot of running in that first quarter. Kerry beaten to the punch on that occasion. Wayne Stringer smothered. Gumley might get a free kick. He deserves it. He was making the play and uh, was pushed in the back. A bit of a brawl on up there. It's a, only a mini brawl, though. It's not a big one. But Sherman gets into the act of it. He's really, he used to be a really quiet young man when he first started. He's, as his years have gone by, he's certainly not frightened to get into anything. Oh, I think it happens to, uh, <laughs> to most people, Robert. Eddie Fry wants to go on with it. Alan Stringer is the target of his attention. I think it's Gumley's free kick after all that, Peter. <laughs> We might need a replay to find out whose kick it is. The umpire hasn't forgotten. Umpire Neville Thorpe right on it. And Mark Mackey still out there separating Fry and I think it's Stringer, is it? Oh, it would have to be Alan Stringer in. He's normally in the in the fray. But it's uh, Gumley, the Carlton recruit, that set a half forward with big Peter Carey standing the mark. It's an important shot at goal for Sturt. They've got to stay in touch. Gumley's kick looks to be straight. It is. Good goal for Gumley. When we left Football Park just before that break, we were at the nine-minute mark of the second term, and the Bays were in front by 20 points. But, Robert, if I was a Sturt supporter, I would have had the feeling at that stage of the game that we were about to get back into it. Yeah, they had a bit of a chance. What they did in the second quarter, Rick, they put Peter Motley loose in defence. He went back to the other edge of the, the, edge of the square. Frank Spool started knocking the ball backwards, and Peter Motley actually provided some sort of a resistance back there. They weren't having much success in that 
defensive action. And Glenelg always looked as though they were going to kick a big score at any stage. Jim Derrington played very well in that second quarter. He moved the ball well through the half forward line. But nevertheless, it was Ross Gibbs and Chris Duthie was always giving himself a run at Rick Davies. Davies made front position today. And I think that Duthie deliberately let him do so, then came through and fisted it away some 20 to 30 metres, and then the Gibbs would read it off hands. John Seabohm at centre half back was excellent. Some of his play, with his fine touch, his ability to get across to the ball, to be there at the right time, he always seems to just have that knack. And he set up a lot of plays, and then across the centre, Tony McGuinness was reading the ball off the spoil, and he showed some great form running through the centre, and some of his kicking into attack was absolutely superb. But all in all, Glenelg, they always look to be there. The second quarter is a pretty nothing affair. Glenelg hadn't kicked many goals in that quarter, but in the others they really shone. And in the third quarter, they came out after half time. Glenelg a little bit, it's a little bit steady. They didn't do much. Sturt attacked strongly, and they kicked a goal to no, to no score. And then at the seven and a half minute mark, we pick up play in the third quarter. Now walk, tackled by David Kernahan. The handball back was good. And the Bay's out of trouble through Gavin White. Good kick up there to Stephen Kernahan. He'll play on. Henwood. Here's the run from the Bay's now. Alan Stringer. McGuinness. I reckon he can run. Over the top now, McDermott. Here's a goal coming up. Great work, Winnell. Three goals, McDermott. What superb football. Winnell, 11 9, Sturt 7 6. And there's another ball on. I, I missed that goal. I was just watching the ball down here on centre wings, and it was Chris McDermott running up the ground again to capitalise. Pagey's played the game hard and fairly, and he's a very good player, run-on player, picking up the gaps. It was Daryl Smith back here on the half-forward line, the other run-on player that's had a couple of opportunities this quarter, but moving it out of defence through the Kernahan, and then further afield towards McDermott. Bernal always settling themselves when they're under any sort of pressure whatsoever. Spiel against Carey, centre bounce. Good one. Spiel's tap away, but it went to McDermott. Couldn't get the kick away. Marshall uses Gavin Walsh. He puts it high to the half forward line. Kane looking for it in defence and takes the mark. Collects the play on the, he'll probably run it to Whittlesey. No kicks longer for Smith. And or Viney. Now Fry's going to have to work hard for it. He and Alan Stringer. Stringer and Fry. Fry's got the footy. Stringer over the top. Bottling the ball up, and the umpire will bounce it on the half-forward line of Glenelg. 11-9 to 7-6. Been a tough game, but a good game. Getting better all the time. Spiel cleverly to Viney. He's well shepherded by Gumley. Kicks long to the lead of Derrington on the outer side. Gibbs has got to go with him. It's a match in two out there, whichever way the ball will bounce. Oh, Gibbs got a magic sit on it, but the kick away was not good. And intercepting is Zubernick at centre wing. Painter is short, so is Viney. Viney's in the centre of the ground. The handball goes over. Sturt building now through Martin. The lead is on from Wilmot. Couldn't take the mark, but he recovers well. The handball comes out now. Gumley. He has to get rid of it quickly. Seaboam again, cool in defence. Puts it out to Hall. The long handball goes out now, and Wayne Stringer will run it across. It's going to look good. That's Stephen Barrett. Copping shoots out of the box and takes a fine mark. Here's a go for McDermott. McGuinness is running. What a great kick to McGuinness. Put this one down. Great football, Glenelg. One goal to McGuinness. 12-9, leading Sturt, 7-6. Well, that's the perfect example of what happens in modern football. Something you'd have never seen 20 years ago. An error in the back line, or in the forward line, if you like, for Sturt. Sees the rebounding play by Glenelg straight up the ground. Some very accurate giving. And that magnificent pass over the top by McDermott to McGuinness. Glenelg are reading each other perfectly at the moment. They're prepared to run for each other when they get possession. And they're looking very confident indeed. Are they ever? Spill and Carey. Sturt got in top during that second quarter for a while out of the bounce. But now it's the Bay's turn. Carey's tap. Or high tackle there put on... Uh, there's a kidney at the bottom of the pack, and he's going to get the free kick. Kidney from centre circle to put the bays in again. For the half forward line. Kernahan had two on him. Over the top he came. The umpire said he's made. Stephen Kernahan came in for, from behind and was paid the mark. About 45 metres out. 
hasn't been all that successful kicking for goal today got one in the first quarter but, uh, normally a great kicker of the footy gee that's a better one coming back shot to the left goal post brought it back goal number two Stephen Kernan and the Bays go on their merry way 39 play 7-6 Stephen Kernahan again showing that wonderful talent he has overhead, just plucking the ball off the top of Mervyn Kane's hands then. Beautiful controlled mark. Connell with Kidney, who's done a quite a lot of good play around the centre and backward of centre today, and his kicking's much better in the field than it is in front of goal. Stephen Kernahan's had nine kicks and nine marks, kicked two goals, but he's done a lot of work down the field. Painter fighting hard for it, got the high one from Marshall, and he's got the free kick. Three kicks at half. 12 to 14 in favour of Sturt. There's another brawl on. Gumley. Peter Kerr will lose his jumper in a minute. Finally, uh, back to the football. Painter will take a free kick. Or a free handball. No, he didn't come over his mark. The umpire's letting him go back. Kicks out wide to Derrington. It's pretty tough, really, when you've got to rely on your rival to take the marks on your half-forward line. Simons tears away to Marshall. This is where Glenelg have killed Sturt, running it up from half-back. Big holes in the Sturt defence. Coppings behind. Comes to him. Right goal, Coppings. Read it beautifully off the pack. That's his sixth. They don't come much better than that. Glenelg a 14-9. Sturt a 7-6. Peter said it's in the holes in the... Um, half forward line of Sturt, I would say, that's the big problem in the, rather than their defence. Some of that rebound that Glenelg are getting from that half back line. It's amazing then that John Painter should try to kick a ball two on one against Jimmy Derrington when he's got Peter Mott leading to the other side of the ground. And it's their disposal is getting them into all sorts of trouble. And that half back line led by Seaboam is absolutely on top. The Sturt camp, anything but happy, understandably so. Reserves coach John McGuinness, Sandy Nelson. Not happy with the situation. Sturt are going to have to lift. Gumley. Smith. A towering torpedo punt in towards Davies. Good mark. An awkward one. It wasn't really a good spin on the ball. And it dropped more quickly than perhaps Duthie thought. Davies read it well. Strong pair of hands. And he should not miss from here. Gee, Sturt need one. Make that a half a dozen in a hurry. Point blank range. Oh, Davey got it. Just got that one through. And uh, I think the Bay players didn't think Stephen Barrett said it wasn't true. But the umpire's given it to him. Davies kicks his second. Sturt 8 6 with Earl 14 9. Glenelg ran out pretty convincing winners at Football Park this afternoon. 25 goals, 17, 167 points to Sturt, 14, 12, 96. The goal kickers were for Glenelg, Stephen Copping bag 10 today and Kernahan 4, while for Sturt, Gumley and Wilmot both managed 3. And the stats from Football Park this afternoon, kicks Glenelg 222, all the twos to Sturt 197. The marks 100, played 53, handballs 147 to 120. The freeze, even Stevens, 23 to 23. And the rucks out of centre 10 to 11, scoring shots 42 to 26. And after the game, Ian Day and Peter Marker caught up with Graham Corns and Mervyn Kane. McDermott and McGuinness have been playing well for weeks now, but you must have also been pleased with the improved form of Robin Kidney. Well, Robin's one of those players who gets kicks and does things that people don't notice. You can always rely, uh, rely on him when the ball's around his area to either contest strongly, control the ball, or dispossess the player with the ball so a lot of the things he does and I remember listening to Graham Campbell last year saying the same thing a lot of the things he he does go unnoticed and um, and I must say he yeah, I've opened my eyes a little bit more uh, towards his efforts and abilities this year and obviously I'm very pleased with him so at the moment the base going quite well well you know you've still got to look it's only four games and we haven't, uh, we've, we, we lost to Norwood, so we can't get carried away there. We've beaten Port and Sturt and Torrens, so we've still got some very hard games to come. And to say we're going well is probably correct. There's room for improvement. And, you know, I couldn't think anybody, any team at this stage could get carried away with their performances because it doesn't mean a thing where you finish after nine games. It's where you finished after 22 that makes the difference and how you go on from there. Some of your players coming back from injury, perhaps were a fraction short of a run? Yeah, possibly, but, uh, you know, I mean, you, you can look slow when you're chasing jumpers all day, and that's exactly what we were doing. And, 
you know, the guys that come back are some of the fittest players in football, so there was not, nothing really lacking from their own personal point of view, but when you're chasing jumpers, it just makes it terribly hard. Well, it's only early days. You've only played four. It's 1-3 uh, at this stage is your record. Can you turn it around? Well, we believe so. I mean, we just had a meeting amongst each other, and uh, the hard work's got to come. Uh, we're certainly not going to bury our head in the sand or walk away from where we're at. We've just got to work hard because we believe we've got enough good players around the club to do well this year. A disappointment there for Mervyn Kane, but uh, with us in the studio tonight, a very happy Tony Simons. Tony, first of all, congratulations on making the state squad this year. And one question I'd like to ask you is just, how do you see your role as a wingman in relation to Glenelg's overall team performance? Uh, well, I guess it's pretty similar to a lot of uh, wingmen in a lot of clubs. Uh, it's basically a running game. Uh, you, ha you have a lot of man-on-man -man duels, one-on-one -on -one out wide. Uh, you're basically a link-up player, I guess. Uh, you're not in there in a lot of the crunches and that sort of gear. You leave that to the ruckman and the centre-half forward. You're basically there to provide a bit of run and uh, set the play up further down the field. If I'm right, I think you started your career off uh, in the forward lines. Do you prefer it on the wing? Yeah, it's great, actually. Uh, Graham Campbell was the one who gave me the <laughs> chance there. Uh, when he first came down, he uh, I'd played half forward and mainly on the bench with John Halbert and uh, gave me a chance uh, actually in the half-back flank the first couple of games and I didn't mind it there. Then he said, well, we'll give you a chance on the wing and have a run out there and uh, things have just sort of gone from there. What was the old story, Tony? Splinters in your backside? Oh, sitting on the fence. I had, a, I had a year or so and I was sitting on the fence most weeks. It was pretty hard to take all the time sitting down at footy park when it was so cold. Tony, a case of deja vu for a stir today. Uh, Copo kicked 11 last year at Unley and 10 today, which is 21 almost the last couple of times you've played against them. The man was on fire again, obviously. He's got a great record against them. You can't do much more than kick 10 goals and 11 goals. Uh, I, I guess it's uh, like a lot of teams, you, you seem to play well against different clubs throughout Funny your enough. career. And uh, Coffo's probably got a good record against Sturdo over the years, if you look back, uh, when he was a wingman and now as a full forward, forward pocket, he's, uh, he's done everything right. Ross Gibbs and uh, Duthie and Seabome in defence. Must give you a bit of confidence when you're playing on the wing. Their rebound's pretty good. They seem to cover up for a lot of mistakes that happen. Uh, it really is a, a very skilled uh, back line. You've got guys like Tony Hall and Ross Gibbs playing on the full back line who can play anywhere. They're sort of guys who've got a lot of ability, a lot of natural flair in the game. And uh, Duth punches the ball away, Seeds punches the ball away, and these guys like Gibbs, he uh, read the ball off the pack so well. And uh, I've got to give Ross Gibbs a big rap because he, uh, he's kicked me so many times the last few weeks and he said if I don't give him a rap tonight <laughs> that he's going he's to get me. <laughs> so uh, he, he does look for me. Uh, he, he, I think he's had over 20 kicks in about three weeks in a row out of the back pocket. And you can't do any more than that. Well, we've seen him a couple of times and he's played very well indeed. Peter Carey started off in the ruck today instead of on the interchange bench. And he certainly did some very good work again in the field. He seems to get his bulk in there, and he rested up forward a couple of times, Tony. Well, there's not many uh, more clever players in the league than Peter Carey, I don't think. Uh, he's played over 300, about 340 games, I think, and uh, he just knows, he reads the play so well. I remember a couple of times last year, he just wandered down one wing, and I'd sort of be wondering what he was going to do. And he just timed his run right and just drifts into the half forward line and takes a grab and kicks a goal, and uh, his experience is invaluable. What about Gavin Walsh? Seems to be relishing his new role as a ruck rover, Tone. Well, he's, uh, he's been around for a couple of years now and uh, he's had a bit of misfortune with injuries over the years. Uh, when you were coaching Graham, he was a back pocket, uh, Basically, yeah. half back flank. And uh, when Graham Corns first came, he tried him at uh, full forward uh, and then gave him a run on the ball. Uh, Chris McDermott was ruck roving well and Hawley wasn't really around the place at that time. So uh, they thought, we'll give him a run on the ball and see how he goes. It's worked. To me, he looks like a, a good ruck rover. And what about Chris Duthie? Uh, I said to Rick the other day, talking about the state squad, there's no regular fullback in the state squad. You've got to give the fellow a big chance of making it. I reckon he'd be a big chance too. Uh, he's done a pretty good job this year and he's, he's got a very good uh, record on blokes like Tim Evans and these sort of guys. They ha he hasn't had a lot of goals kicked on him and he's uh, a sort of guy who could play on a wing if they needed him in the state game or they could throw him around a bit and I, I reckon he'd be a fair chance to get in the squad this week. Tony McGuinness's form has been a little bit better, I think, this year than last year. Come on, Tony, tell us, is he working a bit better, do you think? <laughs> well, uh, I think the, the scores on the board this year, he's, uh, I don't think he's probably had one sort of average game and all the rest of the games he'd have to be in our top half a dozen of players. And uh, without a doubt, uh, he's got back to his 82 McGarry medal best. Uh, and I think he's, uh, if I can coin a phrase, probably shut a few critics up this year with his uh, performances. Uh, you can't do any more than what he's doing at the moment. He's in the state squad and uh, hopefully he'll get a game. He played very well. Now, some of his played backward in defence. He and Chris McDermott did some good work around that half-back line. Yeah, I think he's had another phase of his game this year. Uh, not only is he an attacking rover like a lot of the guys are and good around the goals, but 
this year he's getting back further in defence like Chris McDermott is and uh, I guess that's the sort of thing that comes with a bit of experience. They read the play a bit better and realise what their job is and uh, he's getting a lot of kicks back there this year and it's showing on the on the stat sheets at the end of the game. So it might be a Platinum McGuinness duo in the <laughs> state squad, state side. Well, I guess Angebus would have to have a, a chance oh, yeah, to sure. he's a good player, yeah. but they normally <laughs> play three rows in the state games right. and, uh, you know, I think they, they couldn't do any better than having Tony in there because he's having a great year. I'm glad you wrapped him up, Tony, because, uh, of course, we've got Tony McGuinness sitting on the sidelines here and he got on the edge of his seat when you started to have a, a word about his form. He was waiting for a mention. <laughs> well, he's got to drive me home tonight. If I didn't say anything right, he probably would have left me here, so I've done the right thing. Thanks, Tony. Uh, keep up the good form, mate, because we've got to beat uh, the Vicks on May 14 in the state game, and thanks for coming tonight. And also for Tony, who sat on the sidelines and took all that in. He was coaching well, you. That wraps up the game from Football Park this afternoon.